Now, why white holes? Um, quantum gravity is relevant if you look at the very, very small, but we don't have machines for looking at the very, very small. Okay, the LHC can see at a scale uh, which is small, but it's hugely bigger than the actual scale of the quantum of gravity. So it doesn't help here. Quantum gravity is relevant when nature itself does something in the very, very small and then gets amplified. And there are two cases that we know well where this is relevant. One is the early universe. There's a lot of people who study the early universe trying to use the equation of loop quantum gravity, compute predictions and seeing the CMB, the cosmic background radiation, if we can see effects of quantum gravity effect at the beginning of the universe. This is a lot of work in that direction. But I want to tell you about the other possibility, which is black holes. Black, hole, black holes, we have seen, uh, they exist. When I was a student at university, they told me, well, this, uh, they are just solutions, but they don't exist in reality. That's what my professor told me at the university. Never believe the professor tell you at the university. They were wrong. Black holes do exist. In fact, my, my book said that. Book by Steven Weinberg, you can still look at it written in the 70s, in the chapter, it's a great book, fantastic book on general relativity, in the chapter on black holes, it says, well, there are these solutions, but it's very unlikely that they exist in the universe. Wrong, okay? The great scientist, one of the greatest living scientists we have, was wrong. Um, now, today, uh, uh, in fact, we know there are other solutions of general relativity, which is white holes, I'll say in a moment what they are. And if you typically look in a book of general relativity, they say, well, these probably don't exist in the universe. So, maybe they do exist. Why white holes are relevant for that? Well, this is a actual black hole in the sky. Uh, this, remember, is a, is a picture of the geometry of the gravitational field around it. Usually when we see black holes, uh, typically they're not alone because they're black. Uh, so what we see is when there's a star near to them, Galaxies are full of binary things. Two stars, two neutron stars, one black hole and one star. So if you have one black hole and stars, the, the black hole is very attractive and the, typically the star loses material which falls into the black hole. So we see things falling into the black hole and it radiates a lot and that's what we actually see. The jet here um, is because uh, for reasons which are not totally clear, the matter that uh, spiral, uh, over the black hole, part of it falls inside, part of it is emitted to the north and south pole. We see a beautiful picture in the sky of these jets here. So a lot of matter falls into the black hole. Falls, 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 falls. Okay? The black holes itself, most black holes we see are formed by stars which collapse. So a lot of matter, you know, atoms, uh, nuclei, protons, etc., fall into the black hole. Fall, 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 fall. What happened to the matter that falls into the black hole? I go to the center, and the present answer is that we have no idea. So we... Everything becomes very small, and then there's a quantum phenomena. A quantum mechanics allows things which are forbidden classically. Typically, for instance, take a nucleus, um, uranium nucleus is an alpha particle inside, and classically could never get out, but it does get out, and that's radioactivity. Uh, classically, an uranium nucleus is sort of stable, more or less, in some approximation. Quantum mechanics is not. Classically, a black hole is stable, it's going to stay there forever, quantum mechanically, not. So, here is what it's likely to happen. This is a black hole, uh, matter falls inside, gets to a very small, and then explodes. And the intermediate, so matter falls in, compresses horrendously, becomes very small, we call it a Planck star, 
the stage where matter is maximally squeezed. Then quantum mechanics come in, it does the same thing it does on atoms, it does the same thing it does on uh, uh, nuclei. Quantum mechanics produces a sort of repulsive force and everything gets compressed and then bounces out. Bounces out and makes what? Well, the same thing that, you know, if you take a ball, I think bring a ball, but you can visualize it. You let it go, it goes down, it compresses, and, one, and then what? Then it bounces up, right? So the bouncing up is the same as going down, but time reversed. So what is the time reversed of the black hole? It's a white hole. Black hole, everything can come in, white hole, everything can goes out. So the most likely thing that happens is that black hole forms, quantum gravity, white hole. Star collapses, boom, boom, explodes immediately. But because of time dilation, if I look at it from the outside, I see it at slow motion. So I see boom, 10 billion years, I'm not gonna wait, and then, and that's what a black hole we see in the sky is. It's a collapse, it's a bouncing star seeing in slow motion, very, very slow motion. Now, do we have a chance to see anything like that? Well, remember that uh, the universe exploded in a big, big bang. So uh, long, long ago, uh, everything was very hot and, um, and compressed. So this is expanding universe. We are here. We have so late in time, 10 billion years for 15, whatever, 14 billion years for the Big Bang. We have our radio telescope. Imagine that long, long ago, when the universe was small, a black hole formed. Why? Well, because it's very hot, uh, everything happens, and then it's likely that it's possible, we're not sure, we don't know, that matter collapsed in the strong fluctuations of density and everything at the time. So a black hole, hole forms there. Uh, the matter falls in, immediately bounces out, but in the meanwhile, outside, a lot of time has lapsed. Okay? So when it actually, the white hole actually explodes, it's now. And when it explodes, it's gonna make a boom, like everything explodes, so it makes a signal that we might see it. So here's the idea. Maybe we can see today some signals that came from black hole, which collapsed at the early universe and are exploding today. Now, uh, recently, a small group of people have computed the uh, 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 aspect of these signals and uh, came out with a certain wavelength, and it turns out that this wavelength is very similar to things which actually have been observed, which are called fast radio bursts, um, not long ago by radio telescopes, um, so it's in the radio. Um, this is a signal and uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very short burst, it's a, more or less the right wavelength. And uh, the question is, are these signals which have been observed uh, produced by the white hole exploding that were formed in the early universe? The answer to this question is, um, we don't know, okay? Um, this is not something which has been confirmed, this is not something which is certain, this is not something, but is a attempt to see an effect which is a generally quantum mechanical effect because the bouncing of the hole is a generally quantum mechanical effect uh, which we could see together to today and uh, which could tell us something about the, um, the quantum property of gravity and which could confirm or disconfirm the set of basic equations of loop quantum gravity which I showed you or tell us something directly about quantum gravity. And